Good afternoon, I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News for this Friday, January 3, 2020. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. Opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips has clapped back at those who has criticized his proposal to increase the minimum wage. While speaking with TVJ News yesterday, Dr. Phillips insisted that his proposal could increase economic growth. In his New Year's Day message, Opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips proposed an increase to the minimum wage, which stands currently at $7,000 per week. Dr. Phillips wants this figure to increase to $12,500. But critics believe that move is unrealistic, as employers would not be able to afford such a sharp increase. However, Dr. Phillips said he has seen no evidence to support the critics' claim. I think we have to recognize, first of all, that the country faces a tremendous problem with rising poverty and massive inequality, that it certainly a sharp increase in the minimum wage will not disable most operations. No one has provided evidence that it would, and I think it is something to be explored. On Thursday, Dr. Phillips told our news center that the implementation of his proposal could lead to economic growth. Therefore, he will be bringing his proposal to the House of Representatives for a debate. We certainly think it will help create a better base for equality, especially in the circumstance where many are earning very comfortable profits and will provide a fillip for the economy, where, because it will boost production and demand, particularly among the poorest elements of the population. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. And opposition spokesman on transport, Mikhail Phillips, wants the government to speed up the full implementation of the new Road Traffic Act. He raised the issue following a record number of road fatalities in Jamaica last year. Details in this report. According to the Road Safety Unit, 430 persons died in road crashes in 2019, four less than the record figure in 1993, which was 434. This revelation has led to renewed calls for the full implementation of the new Road Traffic Act and accompanying regulations. Opposition spokesman on transport, Mikhail Phillips, believes the act should be a priority on the government's agenda for 2020. He argues that the first phase of amending the act has been completed, so more should be done. Been passed in Parliament over a year and a half ago. Only some sections of that act has now been brought into being, into law. But we have been waiting over a year now for the regulations which deals with the fines and deal with the electronic um, surveillances. Um, we, we have seen where cameras have been installed at, at intersections, but the, the, the law is not supporting it as yet. Mr. Phillips also raised concern about motorcyclists who account for a significant number of road fatalities in Jamaica. He wants more scrutiny to be given to the sale and use of motorcycles. We need to ensure that the part of the Road Safety Act that deals with persons not being able to ride a motorcycle without gaining a license of doing the, the requisite um, safety and, and being able to ride a motorcycle before getting a, a, a license is something that needs to be looked at and put in being in very, very quick order. Prince Moore, TVJ News. More than 30 people will face the courts this month for breaching the ban on single-use plastic bags. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, says for the most part, the response to the ban has been good. But the agency is dealing with a number of challenges. Public Education and Corporate Communications Manager at NEPA, Olivia Anderson, was speaking recently on TVJ's A Small Jamaica program done it's gone out and we've prosecuted wherever we've had breaches when you say prosecute what kind of prosecution is talking about well we've we brought them to court so we have one matter that was concluded recently and we reported on that um, of a popular restaurant mm. and we have 35 others that will be facing the courts in the what next two weeks persons can be fined fifty thousand dollars or imprisoned for up to two years for breaching the ban 
The narcotics police have charged five men following Saturday's seizure of over 2,000 pounds of ganja along the coast of Morant Bay in St. Thomas. In a statement on Thursday, the police indicated that the men were jointly charged with possession of, dealing in, and taking steps to export ganja, use of conveyance and conspiracy. Reports are that about 5.50 in the morning, the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard intercepted a vessel near Morant Bay. They found 44 plastic bags with compressed ganja. It weighed about 2,353 pounds and has an estimated street value of over $9 million. The five men are scheduled to appear before the St. Thomas Parish Court on January 8. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We have more stories right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Savings and investments, that should be the focus of Jamaicans for the new year, according to one financial expert. Speaking on TVJ's A Smile Jamaica Friday morning, client financial manager at the JMMB, Michelle Sinclair Doyle, said the time is right for people to take advantage of financial opportunities. TVJ's Kalisha Williams has that story. It's the first week of the year that time for New Year's resolutions. Things like getting a healthier diet, getting a new house or car, going back to school or simply hitting the gym. But one financial expert says Jamaicans should be putting savings and investments at the top of their lists. We can do one of two things. We can either adjust our lifestyle so we can have our goals or we can adjust our goals down to suit our lifestyle. All right. It's a simple choice. Correct. I would rather adjust my lifestyle so that I can achieve my goals. Now, for some persons, it will be cutting back. And for some persons, you cannot cut back anymore. It may mean that you need to earn more. You may need to retool, right? So you need to get a new skill so you can earn more. For some persons, you need to be putting yourself in the right environment where you have persons that are speaking positively into your life. Michelle Sinclair Doyle says it's a good time for Jamaicans to start making money moves. For example, investing in the stock market, saving for retirement, or having an emergency fund. Yeah. I had a client who one day, somebody was migrating, wanted to sell a motor vehicle. Person was desperate, she had the cash, cash is king. Boom. Boom. She got a fantastic discount on that car and then mm -hmm. sold it to somebody else at a great profit. I am because mean. she had an emergency fund. So that. you want to have at least three to six months of your expenses in an emergency fund to take advantage of the great opportunities that 2020 will bring. She also indicated that Jamaicans should strategize when it comes to getting a pension plan. In a word of caution, 10% may not be enough. We always hear about this 10%. Put down 10%. Which is the maximum that you can put on. You here. know, yeah. if you, the maximum you can put down is 20%. 20. 20%. Okay. If you're working with an organization that will also contribute to the pension plan, then the maximum you can put is 15, mm -hmm. and then they will normally put 5. Mm -hmm. But okay. the truth is that for some persons, you still need to be putting away something supplemental. So apart from that, so you want to get a licensed financial professional to calculate exactly how much you will need in order to make sure your golden years are fabulous. I'm Kelly? Fishermen in Portland are this afternoon calling on the government to do more to help those in their industry. They say it's difficult to stay in the trade due to the high cost of fishing equipment. TVJ News visited the Bryans Bay Fishing Village in Portland yesterday. What the government really do for our fishermen in this country? They really pressure you more. The license is expensive. Even the charge of them catch you out there and you're not, you're not ready with your license. Now you left it back home. One million dollars. The vessel that we're fishing in is very small. And we're running a lot of risk. We get a nice boat, man. If I have a 42 foot or a 48 foot a boat, can hold where I see for one three week or one two week. That way we could all carry a whole heap of man with you, you know. Could I imply some people behind me. In the meantime, the fishermen has, have welcomed the government's move to ban styrofoam. Well, at the right thing they want to do because it keeps the environment clean, less pollution and those things. And furthermore, when we go to sea, you do, the plastic then do a lot of problems out of sea. Every minute they tie up with engine, but we have to stop. We have to trash the line them every minute. 
And in sports, West Indies opener John Campbell was on Thursday confirmed as captain of the Jamaica Scorpions four-day team for the upcoming regional campaign. As we hear in this report, the left-hander was the overwhelming choice for the job. The 26-year-old opening batsman describes his appointment as a dream come true, having represented Jamaica at every level. Well, it's always a, a honor playing for my country. Um, looking forward to it. A uh, new season, a new challenge for me. Um, first time captain in Jamaica from the start of the season. Uh, while a few seasons back, I captained two games, but no, as the main skipper, it's 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 a lot different. It will be different, and I'm hoping that we could come out on top. And Scorpions coach Andre Coley explains the reason behind Campbell's appointment. Well, first he would needed somebody who obviously would have um, been in a position to be in the eleven, playing eleven. Uh, and then uh, someone with leadership skills and somebody who would obviously have the respect of the players as well. Um, so John um, was the person we selected for the role. Campbell's first challenge will come against Trinidad and Tobago Red Force starting January 9. The game will not only mark a first for Campbell, but could also see left-arm spinner Patrick Harty Jr. making his first-class debut after his maiden selection to the squad. Well, it's a great feeling to be selected for the um, Jamaica Scorpions team. I've been working hard for this um, pretty much all my life, so, you know, um, it's a, definitely a great feeling. Um, my family is definitely proud, and, you know, I just want to go out and represent the country well and ensure that um, we win games. Hearty's selection for some is a long time in coming, but the Kingston Cricket Club player says he never thought about giving up on a national selection despite being constantly overlooked. Well, first and foremost, you know, growing up, I always had a love for the game. So um, it's just the love for the game that keeps you going and, you know, you always want to see yourself do well. And that intrinsic motivation to always perform is always in, inside of me. I can't necessarily speak to that. Um, obviously, I haven't been around, but um, like anybody else, um, sometimes you don't get the opportunity you think, uh, at the time you think you should have it. Um, and he's, he's been given that opportunity now. Um, I know he's, he's, he's ready and he's, he's, um, he's been looking forward to this for a while. Um, so it's, 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 it's for him now just to go and um, express himself in the way that he knows her. Harty and Dennis Smith are the new faces in the Scorpion squad, with the other members being Alwyn Williams, Jermaine Blackwood, Asad Fudadin, Nkuma Bonner, Rothman Powell, Aldane Thomas, Dennis Bulai, Nicholson Gordon, Derval Green and Marquina Mindley. Bernardo Brown for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon and have a great weekend.